So, as the face ages, it breaks down into two types of people. Mm. Hollowers and saggers. Mm. Hollowers lose volume. Saggers are prone to hang and develop bags. You're a hollower. Does this viewing come with a Valium? You're hilarious. No, oh, I'm serious. Facial aging leads to two distinctive looks. I call it sinkers and saggers as opposed to hollowers and saggers. And eventually, if you haven't already, you're gonna fall into one of these two types or a combination of the two. So I'm gonna break down the differences between the facial aging types to help you identify which one you are. And don't worry, you don't need a Valium because I'm gonna tell you what areas to target and what injectable treatments work best based on your aging type so you can maintain a youthful look and I'll tell you what you should avoid. We've scoured the halls of Hollywood to bring you some celebrity examples. So for those who wanna slay facial aging, stay tuned. When we're young, our skin tissue has an even distribution, but as the face ages, our skin tissue starts separating, causing irregular contours, either resulting in deflation of the tissue, which gives more of a hollow sunken look, hence the term sinkers, or descent, which gives more of a drooping or saggy look, hence the term saggers. So how can you figure out which category you fall into? It all boils down to your skin tissue density and how thick or thin it is. When the aging process begins, the thinner and less dense your skin tissue, the more likely it is to sink in. The thicker and denser the skin tissue, the heavier it is, the more likely it is to descend or sag. One of the first things people with thicker skin tend to notice is their cheeks starting to droop. You can see the area to the medial and lateral cheek has a little more separation compared to when she was younger. The loss of the triangle of youth is more apparent as the skin tissue gets heavier to the lower face and some people may notice jowls starting to form. People with this aging type generally don't notice much volume loss, but what they'll do is they'll come in and they'll say, can we just pull my skin back like this? One of the first things people with thinner skin tissue may start to notice is that their faces have more definition than it used to have. And with time, they develop more shadowing in the areas that they're losing volume to, which takes away from the youthful soft contour and their faces look more harsh. And sometimes you're a combination of the two and you have traits of both, with thicker, heavier skin to the mid face area and thinner skin to the lateral face. With time, you lose volume or sink to the lateral areas of the face, as you can see with Alicia Cuthbert. As she got older, she lost volume to the lateral areas of the face, but the mid cheek area remained full and you can see descent. And it appears as though she gained weight, which makes the tissue fuller and heavier to the center of the face. Comment below and let me know if you think you're a sinker, sagger, or combination of the two. If someone is doing a good job maintaining their youthful look by getting injectables, it can be hard to figure out what facial aging type they are because the goal is that you don't show signs of either descent or deflation. And I think Jessica Alba represents a good example of that. I can't prove that she's had injectables, but I suspect she does. She looks pretty much the same as when she was younger. I'm sure she's doing something, whether it be fillers or sculpture, to maintain her youthful look. So what are the signs that you're a sagger? If you have a round facial shape, you're more likely to be a sagger as round faces tend to have thicker skin and a more abundance of facial adiposity or denser skin to the lateral area of the face. Your weight will affect your aging type. This is actress Bridget Fonda, who had a thriving career in Hollywood, starring in films such as Point of No Return and Jackie Brown. She was a sinker, and as she aged, she developed more defined sculpted facial features. She veered away from the spotlight, left acting, and gained weight. Facial fat from weight gain will thicken your skin tissue, and the thicker your tissue, the more likely you are to be a sagger. She's 59 years old, and I don't think she looks 59, and that's probably because if someone is overweight or obese, the facial fat camouflages the aging process by filling out the facial tissue, masking the sinking or sagging skin. So what are the signs that you're a sinker? If you're very fit, thin, and lean, you're more likely to be a sinker, but not in every case. As you can see, these women all have thick skin density and they're very lean. If your face has a lot of definition and you have chiseled facial features, you're probably gonna end up a sinker. And in some cases, you can be a sagger and evolve into a sinker if you lose weight because when you lose weight, you lose facial fat and your skin tissue gets thinner. The best advice I can give someone who has thick, dense skin who wants to go down the non-invasive route and do injectables is two things. Number one, stay on top of restoring your mid face to try to give the tissue support and prevent the tissue from drooping, drooping down forward like this. And you can do that with filler to the mid face and you can also do that with Sculptra. I customize it based on a number of different things. One of them being how thick and 
dense your skin tissue is. Here we did three syringes of filler, two to his mid face and one to his smile lines or nasolabial folds. And you can see his skin tissue was more descended down and it drooped more forward. This lessened after we did filler because now his skin tissue has more support because we treated his mid face. In general, the thicker your skin, the more filler that's needed to give the tissue support. And I like to use more robust fillers for people with very thick skin. I know I talk a lot about Sculptra being great for sinkers, but I also like to use it for saggers. And the place where I love to use it is in the back of the lateral cheek or pre-auricular area because it gives the jowl area support and it helps the skin from folding over or drooping forward that we spoke about earlier. Tip number two for people with a very thick skin, and this is really important if you want to go down the non-invasive route with injectables or anything else. Maintain a healthy weight or BMI. Because if you gain weight, you get more facial fat, which plays a role in the density of your tissue. And the thicker and denser your tissue, the more difficult it is to give it support. And facial fat can also contribute to jowls, especially if you have a wide face or jawline. In my opinion, as a cosmetic injector, the most difficult patient to treat is someone who has very thick, dense skin, who has a high BMI or is overweight. The thicker and denser your skin, the more product that's generally needed, and the results are not as apparent or noticeable. But if someone with a high BMI who's overweight lost weight, the skin tissue will lose some of the density, and as the facial fat's lost, it's easier to give the tissue support. Less product is needed because I'm not working against the density of their facial fat. If you have very thick, dense skin and you're a high BMI, I also don't want to go to town with filler because I have to add a lot of volume to try to give the tissue support. This is why thread lifts are very appealing for those who have thicker, denser skin who may be heavier because they don't want to add more volume to their skin tissue. But I'm not a fan of thread lifts because you're basically lifting the skin up and tacking it up with barbs. I know some people love them and I can understand someone doing it as the last resort before undergoing a facelift. You can tack up the skin and it looked 10 years younger, but why did the skin tissue lose elasticity in the first place? Why did it sag? Why did it sink? Even though tacking the skin up gives you an immediate result, to me, it's not exactly getting to the root of the issue. Did the skin sag because it lost thin string vectors that were holding it up? A big part of the reason our skin droops or sags is because we lose collagen and fat pads that are spread diffusely in our tissue. Even if you do thread lifts and even if you get a facelift, you're still going to need to restore volume to the other areas of your face, like the lips, around your lips, the temples, and facelifts or threads cannot restore volume, which is why all of these procedures have their place depending on your skin tissue density, your facial features, your weight. All of this should be taken into account when deciding what cosmetic treatments will work best for you. If you're very lean and fit, you're more likely to notice the signs of facial aging, which is why the French actress Catherine Deneuve termed the famous quote, after a certain age, you have to choose between your fanny or your face. But I don't want somebody not working out because they're trying to avoid facial aging. You don't have to choose between your fanny or your face because if you're a sinker, by far my favorite treatment is Sculptra. It's a collagen stimulator. And if you don't know what it is and you've never heard of it, you have to watch my Sculptra playlist. It explains what it is, how it works, and there are before and after photos of patients that I've treated. Sinkers can eventually sag to the lower face area, but usually not to the extent of people who have thicker skin. Eventually, if we don't do any inter interventions will all sag from the loss of elasticity of the skin, but because the skin isn't as heavy in sinkers, it doesn't look as jowly as people with thicker skin. As an injector, I feel like it's more difficult to treat people who have jowls if they have a very thick, dense skin because the tissue's heavier and it's harder to give it support. What to avoid? What you want to avoid is overfilling the face, whether it be with filler or a fat transfer. You don't want to lose the natural facial contour in an attempt to try to defy facial aging. Sylvester Stallone, clearly falls into the facial aging category of sinker, or he did. And I don't know what he had done, but I suspect he went overboard with too much filler or maybe silicone. Back in the day, that's all they had. Same thing with Vivica Fox. I can tell she gained weight, which will affect the density of her skin, but these are not natural looking cheeks. Her face is not balanced and her skin tissue looks really hard and firm. I suspect too much filler. Here we have someone who's a combination of a sinker and sagger. She's full to the front of her face and hollow to the lateral face. We did three 
syringes to two her cheeks and one around the smile lines. And we put some on her lips. We gave her a lip filler restoration. We also did Botox, which dramatically softened her lines. For future treatments, I would do Sculptra to the lateral areas of her face to restore the volume to her temples and lateral cheek area. So we've discussed skin density, thin versus thicker tissue, but there's also skin elasticity or skin turgor that comes into play. Everyone has different skin elasticity or turgor. I've had patients in their 50s whose skin tissue is very taut and patients the same age with skin tissue that's just more naturally loose. If your skin turgor is average or above average, I really do feel that you can ward off a facelift. If you're staying a healthy weight or you're really fit and if you stay on top of facial aging. And by staying on top, I mean you started injectables before you lost too much elasticity in the skin and you're doing injectables like fillers and Sculptra. You're getting treated once or maybe twice a year. And most people usually benefit from getting Botox three to four or at least two times a year. But I've had some people who didn't even start Botox until they were 50 because they didn't have wrinkles to their upper face until then. And if it comes to the time where you do need a facelift, it's way further down the road. Optimal results from cosmetic procedures are often achieved when you prioritize your overall well-being. Your body operates as a harmonious system and your health as a whole plays a crucial role. Embracing integrated wellness, like maintaining a healthy body weight, makes it easier to correct the signs of aging and allows you to achieve optimal results when you do get these procedures done. If you haven't watched my video on facial fat and how it can affect not just your attraction, but be a marker for your overall health, be sure to check it out. Share this video with your friends, let your beauty squad know, and don't forget to watch these videos next to learn how you can look more naturally beautiful.